Hey guys, so um, this is number 11 in the series, and this is um, from 11, 17, 23. It's called Traditions. Traditions, traditions. What do we do with all the traditions? Look and see. Look in the Bible. Which traditions were started by me? Which is by man? How many men have added traditions that now are a point of argument? I am simple. Traditions are for your good. They add structure to the year. They add times to stop and be grateful. This Does this mean you should hold to all of the Hebrew traditions of old? Read Romans and Hebrews and see that they were only for a time. But my only son Jesus fulfilled the need for these traditions. The church was given a few traditions, but mostly the simplicity of life in freedom. To follow the author and his son in obedience, to submit to the Holy Spirit and be shaped into who you were created to be, to live simply and rightly, and have a desire to serve. These bring others into a relationship with Jesus. Each of the acts that some hold to as traditions are actually for your good. Some say communion is a tradition, but communion is for introspection to see if any transgressions away from the standard of Christ likeness have been committed and to continually allow the power of the blood of Jesus to come over them. Asking respectfully for forgiveness keeps a person in good standing and pure of heart. Some find arguments over traditions in the church. Stop and evaluate. Learn. When did these traditions begin? How did they come about? How and why? Do they have merit? Or were they just for a season of history? The church is given much freedom. Learning my word, worship, and fellowship are non-negotiable requirements of the church. Much of what divides people and churches is of man. Stick to the Bible. The New Testament creates a very thorough manual for how the church is to function. Some fear the Holy Spirit. This is because with freedom comes the inevitable overreach when the adversary draws people near the truth but not into it. Some expressions that are called the Holy Spirit are not. This is usually meant well but not enough study and too much emotion. This fuels problems and going off course. Stick with the words of the Bible. Study them repeatedly and notice what there is to know about the Holy Spirit shown perfectly in the Bible. Read and see what is not mentioned where the Holy Spirit is brought forth. Evaluate this with what you are curious to learn to find it if it aligns or not. If you see any additions in people or churches that are uncomfortable, take note and do not partake or join in what you sense is falsehood. On the other side of the evaluation, do not turn my spirit away from doing things and bringing people knowledge or having others spiritual abilities because it is a tradition of yours to avoid the gift of the Holy Spirit. Only those led by the Holy Spirit are truly in obedience. It is not possible to be in obedience and not listen and follow along with the Holy Spirit. Recall the Holy Spirit is of order and peace. So here's the verses for number 11. 2 Thessalonians 2.15 Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or our epistle. Mark 7, 7 to 9 and 13. He answered and said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men, for laying aside the commandment of God, and you hold the traditions of men the washing of pitchers and cups, and many other such things you do. He said to them, All too well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your tradition, making the word of God no effect through your tradition, which you have handed down, and many such things you do. Colossians 2.8 Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy, and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. 
1 Corinthians 14.33 For God is not the author of confusion but peace, as in all churches of the saints. Titus 3, 9 through 11. But avoid foolish disputes, genealogies, contentions, and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and useless. Reject a divisive man after the first and second admonition, knowing that such a person is warped and sinning, being self-condemned. That's it for this one, and I'll see you soon. Thank <laughs> you.